Here's another hot take that people may not want to hear, but why don't we hire veterans to be bus drivers, have them be armed while they drive the bus, and then pay them to be full-time security guards at every school? That way, the children are safe on the bus ride to, bus ride from, and while at school. We just sent $40 billion away to a different country, and we're acting like we can't solve this problem in a snap of a fingers and make them more secure than even our politicians? Please, give me a fucking break. Shalom. Kohlaimla, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rikwa Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel. Throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. When you realize something is just not right. <coughs> so some people are late bloomers when the alarm is being sounded. Trumpet is being blown every day. But the other part of that equation is that these videos are being badly shadow banned. But nevertheless, you can't stop the will of the Most High. So America is growing more and more divided. And Bible prophecy cannot be hindered. The Bible says... I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. So, rather you be liberal or conservative, Americans are realizing that something is not right. How can a country that can afford to send $40 billion over to the Ukraine, which is the center of child sex trafficking, but at the same time, and that's the center of speculation, unconfirmed reports that there's a large Nazi presence there, that the country is also suspected of child sex trafficking. But yet, in your own country, you're struggling to provide adequate baby formula for infants, and you're struggling to secure your own borders. So people are realizing that something just is not right. Now, they may not understand the scriptures. So this is where the Most High begins to work magic. Because you got some groups out there, Israelites, think they have to arm themselves. What if I told you the Most High is going to arm citizens to fight, to go against tyranny? The Most High is going to do that. So when you have a spiritual eye, the Most High fights for us. There's about a half a million firearms floating around in America. Now the elect that trust in Yahweh Shai, trust in the Most High, Yahweh, don't need to take up firearms. So what's my point? The Most High is going to stir up the spirit of battle. He's going to cause Egyptian against Egyptian. He's going to cause that civil unrest civil strife. So why worry about trying to take up arms when we know that we have a spiritual force around us, a hedge of protection? <clears throat> Let's go into the scriptures. And it takes a spiritual mindset to be able to follow what I just said. So many of these events are pushing agendas political agendas. 
and it's very suspect that many of these shootings occur right at the brink of a new policy being pushed forward or a new agenda that's being promoted. And in this case, by the left. Let's play this video. We're introducing legislation to implement a national freeze on handgun ownership. What this means is that it will no longer be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns anywhere in Canada. In other words, we're capping the market for handguns. Now that's Canada, but these type of decrees are being pushed in the U.S., but not to this extent in Canada. But there, there are multiple plans and policies that are being generated, which leads in this direction of Canada, ultimately, not now. So these are some of the long-term objectives to attack Americans' Second Amendment gun rights. So many of these mass shootings come in the wake of political decisions that are underway. And that's very suspect. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> The Most High fights for his elect. He puts a hedge of protection around those that fear him. Let's go here. By the way, <clears throat> this is ridiculous. I pulled the stat. $40 billion gone to the Ukraine over the last six months. Probably more than that. Look at this stat here. In 2021, 19,750 veterans are homeless, representing 8% of all sheltered adults in the United States. Veterans experience sheltered homelessness, which account for 11 out of every 10,000 veterans in the country. But yet we can't afford baby, fam baby formula and sending $40 billion over to the Ukraine. Something is just not right. So the leadership here can sense the general spirit of an uprising. They're not stupid. They're trying to put measures in place to prevent the prophetic inevitable. Egyptian against Egyptian, neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother. They listen to our videos too. They listen, so they're not stupid. But America is a powder keg. And all it's going to take is one spark to set it off. Let's go here. I'm going to go to Sirach. <coughs> Sirach, chapter 26, verse 28. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry, a man of war that suffereth poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returneth from righteousness to sin. The Lord prepareth such a one for the sword. So this place is being set up for massive judgments. You got men of war that are homeless. 
You got warriors that are being treated like red-headed stepchildren. Two times removed. Go here next. Ecclesiastes 10. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 10, verse 5. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. So the rich are the elect, the heirs to the kingdom to come. You have an elect running around on this earth that are waking up to this truth, being gathered by the word. But folly is set in great dignity and we're being ruled over by a base people pursuant to Daniel 4 and 17. And that's an also in Job. They are children of fools, base men. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. The image that comes to mind is that, <clears throat> excuse me, the National Museum of History in New York, the Theodore Roosevelt statue, where he had Gad on his left-hand side. Theodore Roosevelt was sitting on a horse, and he had Judah, a so-called Negro, on his right side, and Gad, a so-called Native American Indian, on his left while he sat on a high horse. So they took down that statue because the men of the Lord are prophesying and highlighting things through a spiritual eye. <clears throat> so the rich are the elect that are in a temporary low estate. Let's go to 2 Samuel 7, excuse me, 2 Samuel 22, verse 38. So the kingdom is going to be given, well, let me, let me back up. Judgment is going to be given to the saints. The saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. And that's going to be that power is going to be given from on high through Yahweh Shai. Let's go here. 2 Samuel 22, verse 38. I have pursued mine enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. And I had consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me, thou hast subdued under me. So the heathen and Gentile nations are going to be brought back into their lots and taken down from rulership, placed under the governing authority of the tabernacle of David. <coughs> Second Samuel 22, verse 41. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me, they look, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them 
as the mire of the street and did spread them abroad. So just like the Israelites were scattered, defeated, brought low, their families are going to remain intact, but they're still going to be dispersed or scattered with their families intact. We're not in the business of separating husband and wife, but they also are going to be dispersed, scattered abroad, and serve and be sold unto other taskmasters around the world. So they're going to suffer being packed like sardines on ships, starting with Edom, followed by the other nations. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street and did spread them abroad. So when you study the tabernacle of David, in the Bible, all nations are subdued and subject to payments, to pay tribute to the men of the house of Israel. That's the understanding of the scriptures. Second Samuel 22, verse 44. Thou also has delivered me from the strivings of my people, thou hast kept me to the be head of the heathen. Let's read that again. Thou also hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall serve me. Strangers, shall submit themselves unto me as soon as they hear. They shall be obedient unto me. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their close places. So the Lord is going to raise up a standard and lift up his men of his the anointed ones under the tabernacle of David. So when you read Jeremiah chapter 51, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. He's talking about the tabernacle of David. These are the mighty men from the days of old that are going to get that spirit re-invoked. These are the men that are teaching going out to the highways and byways and teaching daily. Strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. It is the most high that avengeth me and that bringeth down the people under me. So the Lord will fight for us. We don't need to go and gather ammunition, firearms. The Spirit of the Lord is at work. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you can see it clear as day. There is a spirit that's stirring up the vision in America stirring up a rebellious feeling, anti-government sentiments. You see? So this is a spiritual phenomenon taking place. It is a spirit that causes the Israelites to stand with great boldness on their feet on every continent prophesying the downfall of the daughter of Babylon. This is not any coincidence or by accident. So if you have a spiritual eye, you can see that the Lord is working and doing a mighty work. 
it is God that avengeth me, and that bringeth down the people under me, and that bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man, not the this fictitious devil that we have in our mind of a man wearing red spandex suit carrying a big dinner fork and with a long pointed tail. That's Disney World. <coughs> so the violent man is talking about Esau followed by the other enemies of Israel. And that bringeth forth and that bringeth me forth from mine enemies, thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. We are scattered and dispersed among the heathen. So he's going to gather us and exalt us in the lands where we have been put to shame. We're going to be lifted up on high and exalted. Receive glory, honor, and praise as lords on the earth under our Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Second Samuel 22 and 51. He is the tower of salvation for his king. Let's read that again. Second Samuel 22 and 51. And 51, he is the tower of salvation for his king and showeth mercy to his anointed and David and to his seed forevermore. The seed of Jacob, the seed of Abraham, the seed of Isaac and the royal noble house of the regal class of kings, a house of David. Let's close out here. So the wicked is plotting and planning a prayer for the overthrow of the wicked. Psalms 10, verse 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? So we're going to need spiritual intervention. We don't get through this alone. We need the power of the Most High to lift us up, to strengthen us, the, the wicked, and his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Beautiful. So all, everything they're doing is trying to reinforce their policies that they want to get made, made into law. It's not by accident we're seeing all these events in the midst of a political decision that's pending or a new bill that's being passed. Let's close out here. Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after the Most High God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. 
thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. So they think because their kids are not dodging bullets at school, that no harm is going to come to them. No judgments in their gated communities coming out into a beautiful green lawn, picking up the newspaper, going to the mailbox, wearing their robes and their fairy slippers and a cup of coffee in one hand and a cigar in the other. They don't think they're going to be moved from their high and lofty positions. <clears throat> Psalms 10 and 7. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. So there's more than meets the eye. Everything they're doing lines up with the policies that they're pushing, with the unrighteous decrees that they are trying to make law, with the new bills that are being ushered forward. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh by Hashem, or Kadash. We'll rock a thumb. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing. Wait a minute. Let's read this. Let's go here. Can't miss this. Psalms 10 and 17. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou will prepare their heart. Thou will cause thine ear to hear. So we remember in ancient Egypt when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. The Bible says he heard them in their affliction. Matter of fact, let's read it real quick. Right here. <clears throat> Exodus 2, verse 23. Exodus 2, verse 23. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And the Most High looked upon the children of Israel and had respect unto them. <clears throat> so <coughs> there's always a remnant that he's hearing Please to. Psalms 10, verse 17. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. His elect, his remnant, those that remain of him, his anointed ones. Verse 18, Psalms 10, verse 18, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may no more oppress. Remember Job 9 and 24, the earth is given unto the hands of the wicked. See, what it's talking about in the modern sense of the word, the modern Pharaoh, 
the modern Egyptians, 13 Illuminati families, the global elite or international bankers. So this lines up beautifully with Job 9 and 24. To judge the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may no more oppress. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekwak Kadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord Willem. Something just ain't right. Kwam Yasharala, and Abad Babao. We got next, Lord willing, a rock of thumb. Shalom.